Good morning again, Gen Chem students. It is near the end of your spring break or midterm break. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, I'm going to start off. I want to tell you a little bit today. I want to talk a little more about equilibrium. So I'm going to turn this around. Okay, so we should recall from our previous discussion, remember for any chemical reaction, we have a, both a forward and reverse reaction. Um, generic example here on the board. Um, and recall the law of mass action, the equilibrium constant expression where we've got K, KC, KE, Q, KP, whatever. We've got the products over the reactants raised to the stoichiometric quotients. Um, recall from reading the chapter, we'll talk about Le Chatelier's principle a little bit, um, but we could substitute in at any concentrations Q instead of K. Um, and we have the reaction quotient if Q equals K we're at equilibrium so now we're going to turn our attention to looking at um, another very important part of the chapter alright hopefully we can get focus here right we remember we want to look at ice and ice here it's kind of blurry recall it stands for initial change in equilibrium and so we're going to use ice tables to determine equilibrium concentrations and to solve problems relating to equilibrium. Um, oftentimes we'll know the initial concentrations of different uh, chemical reactants and products. Um, we can determine from the stoichiometry the change and then we can determine the equilibrium concentrations. So we're going to set one of these up. Alright folks, let's start off looking at a fairly simple gas reaction. Um, the reaction of carbon monoxide with steam to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. And we can see here in this problem, if we start with one mole of each reactant in a one liter flask, we will know the equilibrium concentrations of all species, meaning both the products and the reactants at equilibrium. And we know the Kc value is 5.1 in this condition. So let's, let's pause. So now what we've done is we put in our initial concentrations. Um, if we have one liter container and we have one mole of each of the CO and the water, we know we have one mole per liter and we have zero moles per liter of the products as indicated. So it might be helpful now to do the next thing is to look at the reaction stoichiometry. And we know that there's a one to one to one to one relationship. So for every I'm getting fuzzy here, but for every mole of reactant that's consumed, we should, can, we should produ produce one mole of product. So I'm going to fill in the change now. So now you can see I filled in the change, right, with using X. Or it could be A, B, C, Y, doesn't matter, some algebraic term. So we've got minus X, CO, minus X for the change in H2O, plus X for the change in CO2, and plus X the change in H2. Now this is because of the stoichiometry. We, right, we have a 1 that would be in front of each of those reactants and products in this case. If that's different, then we've got to multiply by that value. Okay, so then our equilibrium is simply the change minus or plus the the initial plus the change, so in this case 1 minus x and 1 minus x and x and x for each of those. So now we're going to we're going to set up the equilibrium constant expression or law of mass action and then we'll fill in these values and I'll show you how we do that. So again I like to pull this one because it's a very simple, easy starting one. So let's move over here. We're going to take and look at the equilibrium constant expression. We've got the product CO2 and H2 on the numerator and then CO and water on the denominator equals our Kc value that's given we plug in our values from our ice table, we get x times x over 1 minus x times 1 minus x, which is simplified as x squared over 1 minus x squared equals 5.1. And like I said, here this one is relatively simple because now we'll see that we can take the square root of both sides and then we can be able to solve for x a little more simply. So let's do that. So now we see here, if I took the square root of both sides, then everything on the left side falls out. I get x over 1 minus x equals the square root of 
So now if we do a little arithmetic and we find what the square root of 5.1 is, and then we multiply both sides times 1 minus x, we can then shift in, solve for x, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so now I've done some math here, and I've, I've solved for the square root, 2.258, and I've multiplied both sides times 1 minus x to remove that and make it equal to 1x equals 2.258 minus 2.258x. That's rounding, obviously. Um, if I then move the x's both to the left side, I get 3.258x times x equals 2.258. And if I solve for x now, I get approximately 0.693 in this case. Now, we're not done yet. We wanted to know the equilibrium concentrations of everything. So we need to fill in our x, right? And so in this case, it's easy to see that the products should both have be about 0.693 moles per liter, and the reactants here will be a little bit more than 0.3 moles per liter, actually 0.307 moles per liter. Then we should plug those values back in to the equilibrium constant expression and make sure that it equals about 5.1 to double check, right? So whenever we're asked for something like what are the equilibrium concentrations of all of these species, we can't just solve for x and then, say, call it quits. We've got to go through and plug things back in and then double check to make sure that, that everything's right. And if it doesn't make sense, if it's very far off, we need to stop, come back, and try to figure out where we made an error. So the only way to get good at doing ice problems is to do ice problems, is to do a lot of them. So I'm going to try to give you, encourage you and give you some options on doing some of these. And I, I warn you, and I really stress that doing lots of practice problems and doing them correctly and finding out where you're making mistakes well before the exam date is the best strategy in all cases here in general chemistry, too. So um, I think hopefully some of you will realize this if you have not already. Um, so today is Friday, March 13th. We will meet in class again on March 16th on Monday. I will be giving back exam two. Uh, remember that we have a problem set in sapling due on Wednesday, March 18th. Um, over just this stuff here, the equilibrium chapter. Um, so I will hopefully post another video, short video, on some more of this stuff. Um, but do watch this and start practice on sapling and other practice problems. Um, enjoy the rest of your spring break, and I will see you soon. Bye.